వెల్కమ్ టు ఈ పీజీ పాఠశాల మై నేమ్ ఈజ్ రాఘవన్ అండ్ ఐఎమ్ అటాచ్ టు ది సెంటర్ ఫర్ నాలెడ్జ్ అనాలిటిక్స్ అండ్ ఆంట్రలాజికల్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ అట్ ది పిఈఎస్ యూనివర్సిటీ బెంగళూరు దిస్ పర్టికులర్ యూనిట్ డీల్స్ విత్ ది స్కోప్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ డిసిప్లిన్స్ ఆన్ కంప్లీషన్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ పర్టికులర్ యూనిట్ యూ షుడ్ బికమ్ రీజనబ్లీ ఫెమిలియర్ విత్ ది స్కోప్ సబ్ఫీల్డ్స్ ఎట్సెట్రా of the information disciplines i have deliberately used the term information disciplines to connote a wide area what i have used it here is to denote what has traditionally been known as library and information science or information studies it also includes information resources management and a number of other cognate disciplines which are closely associated with this particular field so it's in that sense it's not just one single discipline or domain there are multiple specialties and therefore a range of disciplines collectively can be called as information disciplines they only think that that is common to all of these disciplines is that all of them in some way or the other deal with information information per se if you look at information disciplines the so called information disciplines we have the more established disciplines we do find that these information disciplines took a very long time for them to be recognized as disciplines of study and research although the very first school of library science or school of librarianship was established in the last quarter of the 19th century itself it's only recently that information studies information science has become accepted as a an academic discipline now this is not a very unusual thing and it is similar to what happened to many of the social sciences including for example sociology economics etc although we find very early treatises on economics and political science for example in this country kautilya's arthashastra dates back to the pre common era but still for these disciplines to become accepted and to be subjected to rigorous research using analytical and mathematical tools it took a very very long time and this was something that happened only in the 20th century information sciences are also very similar to these and it is only in recent years that information sciences have become accepted as a domain or a, an academic discipline in universities and the academia there are many reasons for this major developments took place especially after the second world war and many of these contributed to the emergence of information science as an academic discipline some of the important developments as we are all aware are shannon's theory of information the general systems theory of ludwig van bertalanffy the development of cybernetics and many other similar developments we also see that after the second world war the computer and related technologies developed rapidly third factor that contributed to the acceptance and emergence of information disciplines as a major area of study and research is the phenomena of information explosion this is something that happened in the 20th century and is continuing to happen even today at a much much larger scale now these are some of the reasons why 
information became important to the society and it became necessary to have a specialization which focused on information per se, information as such. In the last quarter of the 20th century, we can definitely say that the discipline fully came into its own. As we have already seen, information explosion, significant developments in the information and communication technologies, the web for example. And the other factor is that information also became a major focal point in large businesses, corporations and even governments. We see during the last quarter of the 20th century, corporations, especially large corporations started looking at information as a valuable resource, as a commodity, as a, an economic factor in the growth of their company, corporations. Governments also started looking at information as a major sector. In India, for example, we see that during one of the five-year plans, information sector itself was recognized as a separate sector. During the 1970s, the plan period of 1970s, in our five-year plan, information sector was recognized as an independent sector. Prior to that, we do not see such a development at all. Now, when information sector itself was recognized as an independent sector that needs to be planned, developed, funds should be allocated to that, it was in fact a recognition by the government of India that information is indeed an important area in national development. Of course, the, the development of the World Wide Web in more recent years is another major factor that has contributed to the emergence of information as an important area of concern to all sectors of economy and social development. We also find in the last couple of decades that many of the governments, especially in the developed world, have adopted a national information policy and have put in place a national information infrastructure. In the United States, for example, there is a standing National Committee on Library and Information Services, which is directly responsible to the U.S. Congress, not, its, not even attached to any particular ministry. In India also, we see similar developments. For example, some years ago, the government of India constituted the Raja Ram Mohan Rai Library Foundation, which was given the exclusive responsibility of contributing to public library services development within the country. More recently, the government of India set up the National Knowledge Commission, which came out with major recommendations which have implications for the information and library sectors. Following the recommendations of the National Knowledge Commission, the government of India has set up a couple of years ago the National Mission on Libraries, which is responsible for developing library and information services in this particular country. These are clear indications that government of India, just as many other governments in the developed world has recognized information and library services as an important factor that can significantly contribute to moving the country into an information society and for its socio-economic development.
all these have contributed to the emergence of information sciences as a scientific and socially varied discipline sometime during the last quarter of the 20th century and in the early 21st century. The importance of information has also resulted in many disciplinary groups climbing legitimacy to information related phenomena. What has happened if we notice the developments that have taken place especially in the academia in the last few decades, especially in the last few years is that several other domains such as management sciences, computer and information sciences, communication and behavioral sciences have started programs that are exclusively connected to information. Look at it as a phenomenon, information as a commodity, whatever it might be. So, at present what we have is a situation where not just library and information sciences, but several other academic disciplines and domains have also started programs related to information, programs in which information is a major content. I can give a couple of examples. For example, schools of business have courses and programs related to management information systems, MIS as we call it. Schools of computer and sciences have programs related to information sciences. These are just a couple of examples to suggest that the scope of information has widened and we are using the term information disciplines in this larger sense to refer to a number of disciplines which collectively can be called for want of a better term as information disciplines. One other development that we see in very recent years probably it is just about a decade and a little more than a decade old, the phenomena of what we call as i-schools, the information schools. i-schools are very similar to b-schools, the business schools. In other words, this development looks at information as such information as an entity and study everything about information. Many of the schools, library and information schools in the United States of America restructured themselves, their programs to become what they now call as i-schools and today there is an i-school consortia. There are in fact one or two i-schools even in India, which look at information per se. They study all aspects of information, how information is generated, how information is utilized, what are the properties and characteristics of information, how people use and access information, storage of information, etc., and a number, what actually is the impact of information to mention a few of the areas of interest to the so called i schools. Some of the library and information science schools, although they do not call themselves as i schools, are members of this i school consortia and have substantially restructured their own course contents, their own programs in order to cater to the present day needs. One of the factors that actually triggered the development of i-schools around the world is the need felt by many within the library and information field to see that this particular domain, 
the information sciences or the information disciplines also get similar kind of recognition that many other academic disciplines are getting. Till then, till the establishment of I schools, library and information science schools were largely looked upon as providing manpower for a service institution, the libraries and information systems. In other words, they did not have an independent existence. They had an existence that was actually related to some other work area. In other words, these were looked up as service professions to support some other activity, be it research, teaching, management, governance, whatever it might be. The establishment of high schools, on the other hand, created a situation which led to information being recognized as an academic discipline on par with any other accepted domain such as economics, law or business management, name it. Because of this, what has happened is that what is information science today or information studies or information disciplines today is largely defined by the agenda of the high schools per se. It is useful here before we try to understand the scope of information disciplines to have an idea of the growth and development, historical development of information disciplines. Information disciplines need to be seen differently in comparison to the traditional array of disciplines. One important factor that characterizes the information disciplines as it is obtaining today is that it is a meta discipline which deals with all aspects of information, generation, collection, organization, retrieval, presentation, dissemination, use, application of information in a variety of contexts and information may relate to any subject matter. Now, that is one thing where the information disciplines share something with such disciplines as journalism and communication, where they practically deal with any kind of information, any kind of news, any kind of message. One other area which has become embedded, which has become a major component of information disciplines is that after all information is generated, accessed and used by humans. So, what actually is the information behavior of humans is a major component of information disciplines. We will see a little more of these things a little later in this particular presentation. To begin with, as I said, we will look at this from a historical perspective. The early information disciplines must have emerged when information resources and knowledge artifacts as we can call that in a domain became reasonably large, voluminous. So, early archivists are a profession deal with information of value to historians. Now, they were the early archivists were actually a the historians themselves who tried to store information that could be of value to historical for historical research. In other words, we did not have really a, a separate information profession. Similarly, when we look at libraries, early libraries, most of the early librarians were scholars who were drawn into the library profession. They did not have any specialized training nor did any specialized training program exist in library management as such or in librarianship. 
this also is probably not very very different when we there must be many other similar examples in other domains. Over a period especially towards the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century what actually happened was the volume of information resources to be collected, organized and managed grew rapidly following the phenomena of what is now widely referred to as information explosion. Therefore, the need for developing new solutions to the problem of collecting, organizing, managing, searching, retrieving and disseminating knowledge contained in these resources became necessary. Information studies, if we can use this particular term, could be seen as the body of knowledge and techniques common to such information disciplines distilled over a period of time. That means, it is a discipline that has been formed by the process of what Dr. Ranganathan would call as distillation, distilled from several other disciplines, those aspects of the disciplines which were essentially concerned with information and information resources. A wide range of human activities result in information resources and knowledge artifacts. Research, intellect, thinking, discussion, etc. are some of the processes which result in knowledge artifacts, information resources. And these take a variety of forms, business records, family histories, publications, scholarly books, thesis, scientific journals, articles in scientific journals, patents, standards, conference proceedings, conference publications, religious texts, etc., etc. If we go a little out of this conventional knowledge resources, knowledge records, we see that information resources are also generated in a variety of environments outside this academia and the R&D establishments. For example, a hospital records, generates and records a considerable amount of information about every patient. These are maintained in the form of patient records by a hospital. There is a vast amount of information that is available if we collect all the information available in the patient records. We should be able to help doctors in the process of identifying, retrieving information that may be of value to them in healthcare and health delivery. Let us now come to the scope of information disciplines. There is no clarity on what constitutes the information disciplines. The first group to give some kind of a shape and structure to what we can, what was then called as librarianship was the profession of librarianship itself. This started when Melville Dewey established the first library school in the Columbia University in the United States in 1876. But we have moved a long distance since Melville Dewey established the library school in Columbia and today the scope of information disciplines has vastly changed and altered. The emphasis has also changed. An encyclopedia that was compiled recently by Marcia Bates and a few others gives a better idea of the scope of information disciplines as it is obtaining today. Evidently, it is interdisciplinary in nature and occurs at the intersection of and draws from many other disciplines. The diagram providing this spectrum of information disciplines makes this quite obvious. 
you can see the number of different disciplines that are actually contributing to information disciplines, a range of them, all of them getting included within the scope of information sciences. Include, for example, what was traditionally library science, what became later known as information sciences, the domain of records management, information system sciences, archives, knowledge management, museum studies, social studies of information, well, to name a few. Social studies of information, for example, was initiated by sociologists. Information use behavior, for example, was first studied by behavioral scientists and psychologists. Now, all these have come together because the common thread among all of them is that they are all concerned with information and together today constitute what we can consider as the information disciplines. So, to say the scope of information science today is that anything that has something to do with knowledge artifacts, information as an entity, information as a commodity, now that falls within the scope of information sciences or information disciplines. Not only this, we also look at what actually is the impact of these knowledge artifacts or information resources on individuals and organizations that is also within the scope of information sciences or information disciplines as we look at it today. A domain which is very closely related to information disciplines is museum studies. Museums along with libraries and archives are collectively referred to as memory institutions, because all of these libraries conventionally, archives and museums, all of them collect and preserve cultural artifacts, records of cultural, artistic and intellectual heritage of a nation or of a particular community. So, we can possibly sum up and say that information studies is about knowledge artifacts. How to help, we are concerned with how to help people find knowledge artifacts of value to them, of interest to them, how people seek and use information, apply information study this because an understanding of user and user behavior is essential for enhancing the quality of information services and how these knowledge artifacts and information resources should be organized, represented and indexed to facilitate access to them. One other aspect of information disciplines is to look purely at the properties of information and information resources. This area which studies the quantitative properties, attributes of information, information per se is now known as infometrics, scientometrics, webometrics, bibliometrics. The current terminology that is used widely is infometrics and scientometrics. So, these all come within the scope of information studies or information disciplines as it is known today. To list some of the major subfields of information disciplines, the focus is on users and this entire area could be called as user study. You can look at specific user groups and each user group is a major area of interest to information scientists or information study professionals. For example, people study how 
children behave with regard to information how they understand information undergraduate students middle level managers housewives planners space scientists legal professionals doctors etc etc so user studies is one major sub field of information disciplines which looks at specific user groups and their characteristics traits and information use patterns and information behavior today's information disciplines also focuses on specific technologies and their use in information dissemination information sharing and information exchange for example social media and how they are used in information sharing and exchange has become a major area of study today information handling and processes have for long been a major area of information disciplines this is the core of information studies knowledge organization information search and information retrieval are some of the most important subfields that fall within this particular area there are also subfields of information disciplines that focus on specific domains such as scientific information legal information health related information etc specific specializations have emerged in each one of these health informatics for example is taught in many medical schools today it's a major area of research not only in the i schools but also in schools devoted to health and medical sciences there are also sub fields of information that focus on specific kinds of information institutions for example there are courses which deal relate to different types of libraries courses which relate to archives courses which relate to knowledge management industrial libraries so on and so forth i already made a reference to a sub field that studies the properties and behavior of information scientometrics and infometrics the interdisciplinary nature of information science is brought about very clearly in different definitions of information science as the domain evolved we can look at the definitions given by harald borko in the or late 60s 1968 douglas fasket in 1980 tefko sarasevic in 1996 and more recently in the wikipedia all these definitions emphasize the interdisciplinary nature of information studies of course the focus differs depending upon who is looking at this particular or who defines actually the information disciplines for each one of them there is a slightly different focus sarasevic who has contributed substantially to the domain of information studies puts information retrieval at the core of information disciplines he says that the profession of information scientists exists primarily because the principal cause for the emergence of this particular discipline according to him is information retrieval there is a need for information retrieval and that is the main reason why this particular information profession exists you will have a look at this particular diagram which again demonstrates the interdisciplinary nature of information sciences which has drawn from librarianship cognitive sciences communication sciences and communicate com computer sciences we also can see that 
information studies, information sciences have emerged uh, from many other you know developments that took place in the first half of the 20th century. Perhaps one of the major factors that contributed to the development of this particular emergence of this particular discipline is the establishment of the International Institute of Bibliography by Paul Ortlitt and Henry Lafontaine in the last decade of the 19th century, which was renamed as the International Federation for Documentation, the FID in 1931. Although the institution FID does not exist any longer, it has ceased to exist, still its impact on the development of information science at, as a discipline is very, very considerable. What is very important about FID is that its founders, Paul Ortlitt and Henry Lafontaine projected a global vision for information very similar to today's information society. We also see the visions of network of knowledge focusing on documents which included the notion of hyperlinks in that famous article by Vannevar Bush which appeared in the Atlantic Monthly. Vannevar Bush realized very early what eventually became the World Wide Web. The other major contributing factors are Shannon's information theory and the emergence of the database industry beginning with the 1960s and 1970s. Information science was formally born in a workshop in a meeting at the Georgia Institute of Technology in 1962. And its scope was defined in a resolution that was adopted at that particular meeting and I quote, information studies attempts to formalize the properties of information by applying information theory and several other constructs from cognitive sciences, logic and philosophy. There are different viewpoints as to what constitutes information studies. This is something that we have emphasized throughout. There is a different perspective of information science from the perspective of engineering discipline. The connotation is very, very different. But what we are concerned with primarily is we see information discipline as a discipline evolving from librarianship and documentation with inputs from many other disciplines already shown in the diagram that was displayed earlier. So, the major areas of study and research today are information and knowledge society and this entire paper is on knowledge society. Information access, you will look at many, many subfields, contents of this particular area in another paper on information systems and services. Information architecture, although we will not focus much on this, this is an area that is of interest to high schools which look at primarily at the art and science of organizing and presenting information on websites and intranets. This is a major area. Information architecture is a major area of interest. Uh, what is happening in recent years, however, is that information architects are finding some of the traditional tools and techniques that were developed quite early by librarians. For example, the facet analytic techniques, facet analysis developed by Dr. S. R. Ranganathan has application in information architecture. Information and knowledge management is another major area of study. And as I mentioned earlier, information processing and retrieval is a major, is probably the core of information studies or information disciplines. The major subfields include such aspects as metadata, knowledge organization, relational databases and it draws its input from 
natural language processing, cognitive information processing and many other areas. Knowledge representation which is traditionally seen as a branch of artificial intelligence is also an area that is of interest to information disciplines today. Information seeking behavior ISB and modeling information seeking behavior in an attempt to build theories of information seeking is one other area which is a major area of study and research in the information disciplines. Infometrics is another area which seeks to quantify, map and model information in all its manifestations and in terms of it all its attributes. For example, people study how information is scattered, how information becomes obsolete, how information is distributed, what is its utility, value, are there any interrelationship between production of information and many other factors such as how much is actually input into scientific and industrial research, what is the investment on scientific research. So, there are many aspects which are of great interest to infometricians today and these are all actually studied in infometrics which is another major branch of information disciplines. To conclude, it is common practice today to bring all the four major areas namely library and information science, what has traditionally been known as library and information science LIS, information studies or information sciences, archival studies and knowledge management with all the tools that are required for these activities under the same umbrella and offer each as a specialized program and this is precisely what high schools are aimed at doing. I suppose in this particular pro course presentation, I have given you a rough idea of what information disciplines are, what is their scope and what are the major areas of study of information disciplines. Thank you very much.